microphone. Um, welcome, I'm Mark Weitzman, Director of Government Affairs for the Simon Wiesenthal Center. And on behalf of the Center um, and its New York office, I would like to welcome you all here for I think what is a momentous and in many ways landmark event for us, an evening uh, honoring the launch of Professor David Ryan Davis's new book. Um, a couple of acknowledgments and some brief introduction, and then we're gonna start the program, turn the program over to the speakers who are up there. Um, but I'd like to begin, first of all, by sending my thanks to my colleague and friend, Dr. Harold Brackman, who was the person who arranged for this event that brought uh, Dr. Dave, Professor Davis and, and the center together. Um, so we owe Harold a great deal. Um, I'd also like to thank Michelle Summers um, from the publishers, um, from not the publishers of the book, um, as well as Leslie Ehrman from the Gilda Lerman Institute for their help and cooperation in arranging um, this evening. Um, I also would like to very much welcome and recognize um, Alan and Francis Adler, members of the Simon Wiesenthal Center's Board of Trustees, who um, have taken their time to come here this evening as well. Um, thank you for that. Um, a few brief words of introduction from my, my part. One of the reasons that I was so glad and jumped at this opportunity was because, um, because the, this work and, and the work of Professor Davis has meant such a great deal. Um, to us. Personally, my own work has drawn upon and benefited from some of Professor Davis's writings, particularly years ago uh, when I was researching and, and comparing anti-Semitism and anti-Catholicism online. And just give you a sense of some of the, the breadth of Professor Davis's work that, that didn't even include slavery, which is what we're here to talk about tonight in a sense, but yet was landmark in its own right on those areas as well. Um, and I'm also, we are in, in, all greatly indebted to Professor Davis's courage in confirmly, firmly confronting anti-Semitism, particularly, again, a few decades ago when it was a time of great controversy, controversy and great tension, and yet he stood up and very forthrightly condemned what needed to be condemned and did it in a um, scholarly and uh, dispassionate manner that left a great impression. In many ways, it is a natural fit for the Simon Wiesenthal Center to be able to host this event. The center is named after a survivor of the Nazi Holocaust, a person who, after liberation, devoted his life to both bringing justice to the victims of the Holocaust and becoming a human rights champion in a broad sense, um, trying to ensure that the lessons of that period would never be forgotten and that no group, Jews or others, would ever suffer such a fate again. And in a sense, that is, there's a great affinity between that and between the trailblazing work of Professor Davis. For example, it doesn't take more than a cursory glance at our own world to see how short of the ideal we have fallen, despite the defeat of the Nazi genocide, and since, <coughs> despite the defeat of the Nazi genocide, and since oppression and uh, genocide are continuously present in our world even today. Thus, too, Professor Davis reminds us in the epilogue of his book that in slavery still exists and under certain conditions might even be restored on a large scale in certain areas in, a, in today's world. But the affinity runs deeper. Like Simon Wiesenthal, Professor Davis's life and work were shaped in great extent by the events of World War II. In, as he himself has written and stated that, quote, living in the shadows of the Holocaust and amid the rubble and ruins of the world's greatest war was where he decided to embark on his career as an historian with the goal of, again quoting, unearthing the truths long buried beneath the superficial facts of propaganda, a presentation of perspective, and an overall comprehensive view of what people did and thought and why they did it. And finally, to make people stop and think before blindly following some bigoted group to make the world safe for Aryans, Democrats, or Mississippians. This was written in 1946, and the only thing that I would suggest has changed is that the list of the to endanger democracy has probably grown longer and wider. As I read the book, I was drawn to reconsidering the relationships, both similarities and differences, between the Holocaust and the system of slavery that Professor Davis explores. Some brief examples that came to mind were the role of the victims, often ignored in the first wave of study, for example, in dealing with the Holocaust, the Earl Hilbert's um, landmark study, the destruction of the European Jewry, dealt basically, uh, totally with the Nazi perspective, the documentation, the witnesses from the oppressor side, the Nazi side, and totally ignored the role and, and, and the impact on the victims of the Holocaust itself, which leads into a consideration of the perspective of the oppressed 
including the need and cost of collaboration, which is also exemplified by the telling quote from Frederick Douglass that Professor Davis twice brings in the new book about, quote, self-preservation at minimal cost of degradation and loss of self-respect. And that, in turn, is a question much raised in the literature of the Holocaust. How do you survive? What is the impact of survival? What cost of survival? And it's currently, for example, examined in Claude Lanzmann's new film, The Last of the Unjust. These issues are, of course, based upon the application of terms of dehumanization and, again, animalization, which um, Professor Davis uses very much in his explorations, and their internalization, the impact that they have on the oppressed communities, which go a long way to shaping the discourse of human oppression. Even the role of space, of geography, is raised, which is also reflected in current literature on the Holocaust, as in Timothy Snyder's important book, Bloodlands, or the recent work on locating and marking the killing sites of Eastern Europe and the Baltics, where the Nazis slaughtered more victims than they murdered in all the uh, death camps. There are, of course, differences as well. One such fundamental distinction is that while slavery was ultimately an economic venture that had great success, in the Holocaust, economic needs were ultimately subordinated to the pursuit of genocide, thus rendering any method of accommodation by the Jewish population pathetically useless. But fundament fundamentally, it comes down to the idea that there are evils in our past that we must learn from in order to have a brighter future. Or, as Professor Davis concludes, history matters. And I would add, it also helps to have a master teacher who can illuminate, educate, and inspire us to grow up for our own answers to these questions, as Professor Davis has done for so many years. And so tonight, we are here to celebrate the launch of the third and final volume of his magisterial trilogy on slavery, The Problem of Slavery in the Age of Emancipation. And we have two distinguished speakers who will join Professor Davis in conversation about the book and anything else that they want to talk about. Following that, you're all invited downstairs for a light reception and book signing. And you can also wander through our innovative and interactive Museum of Tolerance, which attempts to deal, albeit in a much different manner, with some of the same issues that Professor Davis has worked upon. Before I introduce the speakers, I would just ask anyone to silence the cell phones or whatever electronics that anyone is holding on. Um, to remind you, we are being filmed by C-SPAN. Um, there will be time for questions afterwards. And now I'd like to introduce our, uh, our speakers. Um, I'm going to introduce two students, former students, of uh, Professor Davis who are now uh, master scholars and, and researchers in their own right. And they, in turn, will introduce their teacher as they go along with the event. So sitting closest to me is William Casey King, who earned his PhD from Yale University and was honored to be Dave, Brian Davis's final doctoral student. King, a former Salomon Brothers bond trader, was drawn back to the academy inspired by David Davis's Pulitzer Prize winning problem of slavery in Western culture. Dr. King's work includes a PBS documentary on the life and work of the African-American painter, Henry Osawa Tanner, co-produced with the Philadelphia Museum of Art, an award-winning children's book on the civil rights movement titled, Oh Freedom, a play he wrote and directed on the founding mother, uh, mother of the American Revolution, Mercy Otis Warren, and a book on the history of ambition published last year by Yale University Press. In addition, he has written for the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, and New York Times. Dr. King was formerly at Harvard as executive director of the W.E.B. Du Bois Institute of African and African American Research. He now lectures at Yale on the history of ideas while serving as executive director of the Center of Analytical Sciences at the Yale School of Medicine and School of Public Health. He was named the co-recipient of a grant from uh, DARPA as part of the White House Big Data Research and Development Institute and is developing tools to combat terrorist financing and money laundering for the Department of Treasury. He and Professor Davis are currently collaborating on a young adult book on slavery and anti-slavery. John Stauffer is Professor of English, American Studies, and African American Studies at Harvard University. He writes and lectures on the Civil War era, anti-slavery, social protest movements, and photography. He's the author and editor of 11 books and over 60 articles, including two books that were briefly national bestsellers. His most recent book, co-authored with Benjamin Sokis, is The Battle Hymn of the Republic, a biography of the song that marches on, which was a Lincoln Prize finalist and a best book of 2013. His essays and reviews have appeared in Time, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, Huffington Post, The New Republic, Raritan, and numerous scholarly journal books. He's lectured in Europe and Asia for the United States uh, State Department's International Information Program. He has been a consultant on two Hollywood films, Quentin Tarantino's Django and a screenplay by Gary Ross based on State of Jones. 
He appeared in the PBS documentary The Abolitionist and was advised.